And hello, everybody. This is the one and only Mr. LP, Stephen Sykes of Live and Global Media and responsible by the Cross and Coleman Group and Lito's Pizza. And today I have one of the most beautiful voices out there, one of my favorite singers in the world, Miss uh, DDG. How are you doing today? Good morning. I am great. So glad to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, the honor is mine. The honor is mine. It's a holiday season and you have a wonderful Christmas album out and so many other wonderful things going on. I just felt that, you know, it's very important that uh, the world gets to see more and hear from you. So this is uh, means a lot to me. Wonderful. Now, for those who may not be familiar with you, Madame, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Let's see. Um, I've lived in Hampton Roads, which is Norfolk, Chesapeake, uh, Virginia Beach area um, for I'm native, really, uh, for all of my life um, until I made a really big change this summer. And um, I moved to uh, the Washington, D.C. area. Hey. In, um, August, actually, uh, to take a position. Um, I'm a NASA contractor and I manage their uh, digital media a communications department at NASA headquarters in DC. So the first time I left home uh, at 53 years old, it's so it's, I felt like uh, on my first subway ride to work, I felt like Mary Tyler Moore, like in a new place, new job. I didn't have a hat to throw in the air, but um, a great change. Um, and I still come home um, every weekend, um, still have my house in Chesapeake. So I. Well blessings to you and congratulations we'll just tell everybody in the tidewater area that you hate them and you had to come back to these northern virginia <laughs> uh, <laughs> um so you know like you say you did a new experience and change of pace and career uh not many people get the opportunity to do that at such a young age of 53 as you stated you know how does it feel to make that change and as a powerful um african-american woman as well well, wow, you know, it's it, it kind of didn't make sense in the beginning, but at the end, it made sense. And I'll explain. Um, I have been in marketing and media and public affairs for um, 30 years, really, um, since I graduated from Hampton University, go HU, and um, worked in media and marketing all of my career, all in Hampton Roads. And, um, you know, at 52, 53, I was thinking, okay, you know, I'm getting closer to retirement. So um, the marketplace is ready for the 30 in the 30 year olds now to take over. So I was thinking, you know, well, my career is winding down a little and going in the direction of retirement. And then um, God says, no, I have plans for you. <laughs> Your career is just starting. You so, never retire. You know that, right? <laughs> well, it, that was just one learning experience for me um, when you have faith and you know that God has the master plan. And um, I actually, I got the, the call um, for the position and uh, because I worked at NASA at Langley. So people, some people knew of my work in digital media at Langley. So I got the call to, to come to um, DC and, it, and I'm saying it makes sense is because um, in my 30 years here in Hampton Roads, every job that I worked, um, every person that I encountered, every obstacle that I encountered and survived it, um, I'm using it all now. And I'm able to, I manage um, 25 employees. So I'm able to mentor them, especially the younger ones, and let them know the things that I didn't know 20 years ago. So I'm able to Show them, some, show them some things, show them how to navigate difficult situations, show them how to showcase their best efforts. Um, you know, it's just the God plays everything out. Um, when you really don't know the plan, he has it all set. And so basically you're showing them how to be a boss like you. I am showing them how to navigate choppy waters. <laughs> I'll just put it. I'll, I'll put it uh, diplomatically um, <laughs> on how to navigate difficult waters and difficult people and difficult situations because, you know, I had the basic training and I really didn't feel that there was, I had to learn it on my own. And so to be able to mentor and show people how they can be their best without them going through um, some of the things that I had to go through. It's really nurturing and it's so rewarding because, you know, they're smart people and they know their job. 
um, but I can bring some of my life experiences to them and show them that there's a different way to do this and and it's a smarter way and it's um, they'll benefit in the long run. Amen. Amen. So what uh, what actually got you inside with just such a beautiful career in marketing and media and, now, and digital media and working with uh, government contracts? What got you into this involved with music? Well, um, actually, I've always been a singer. Um, I sang in high school chorus. I sang. I didn't sing in college, uh, but I've always sung in my church choir. Um, actually, um, my father has had 12 brothers and sisters and all of them sang. All of them could sing. Uh, my uncle self-taught himself um, to play the piano and the organ and his, his church organist, uh, pianist in Norfolk. My grandmother, um, who's no longer with us uh, many years ago, was the church um, pianist. So there's music in the family. I've always sung. It was only until, I guess, maybe about 10 years ago that God started pinging me that it was something special because I'm around singers all the time and everybody could sing and I just thought I could sing like the other singers. But I would go to funerals and people would come up to me who didn't know me and put in reservations for me to sing at their funeral. And I thought, well, we don't know the order of who goes, but if I'm still here, <laughs> I will be there. That's a blessing and that's a testament to the anointing within you that people, it's not just the fact that you're singing, it's the fact that people feel comfortable to just randomly, you don't even know, complete strangers coming up to you and ask you to sing at a, a very uh, stressful time in people's lives and their families at their own funeral. You know, it's hard enough to go to your family, talk about, you know, graveyard, saving for your plots and funeral arrangements and wills and, exactly. you know, this funeral is very important to a lot of families and the random someone who don't even know you or may have heard your voice just randomly come up to you that's a testament to your anointing that really that really stood out and i said okay god what are you trying to tell me and um a few months later um i sang at my church a uh, first baptist church uh historic first baptist church in norfolk butte street mm -hmm. and a lady was leaving the parking lot and a lady said, oh, that was a beautiful song. And she said, I said, thank you. And she said, you know, if it was on tape somewhere, I'd buy it. And that <laughs> was a real shocker to me. I really, Stephen, I was like, really? I'm thinking to myself, somebody would actually pay to hear me sing. It was, <laughs> it was out of, what, what does that mean? And it just shocked me. And um, I came home and I said, God, what are you telling me? And uh, I've always had an idea in the back of my mind to, to sing, um, to record, to record the songs that I sing a lot. The Amazing Grace is Eyes on the Sparrow, and those songs were special to me. And so I prayed on it, and um, started asking around um, how to make a CD. And I found. Um, Actually, I went on the Craigslist and posted for Jobs Wanted. I said, I'm looking for an audio engineer to record a gospel CD. I got about 100 responses. I interviewed over the phone about eight people and um, talked to this wonderful uh, gentleman who was starting his own business. And he actually recorded um, at a very reasonable price my first CD. And um, I worked at the Virginian Pilot with a lot of very talented graphic designers. So I went back uh, to one of my coworkers and we're no longer at the pilot, but I reached out to her and she did my graphic designs and I sent it off to a company and then they sent back the CDs, you know, shrink wrap, just like the ones you find in the store. And I was like, wow, this, it's a lot of work, but it's so rewarding. And um, I was very proud of the product, the first CD, but I was very shocked at the positive response. People were blown away, um, not just by the music, um, but by the quality of the production, even when I took it to radio stations. And I guess usually they get a lot of people who will say, you know, here's my CD. But when they right. listened to it and realized that it was a quality sound and they were blown away that I had actually a CD that had, um, you know, broadcast uh, quality sound. And, um, you know, that's the way I do. If I do something, I'm going to find the best people who do it. 
and do it right. Right, of course. And just the, just the testimonies of people saying that, you know, Amazing Grace connected, reconnected them to their grandmother. And those, those um, compliments or people who are saying, uh, I gave it as a gift to my girlfriend who's going through cancer and she said it really helped her and it was the best gift anyone has given her. Um, those, those statements, those feedbacks let me know that it's just not about me singing, but it's God's work. Um, if God gives you a gift, he wants you to use it. And that's not just to me, it's to anyone who is trying to find out what they're supposed to do. If you put your antenna up, the signs are there and, um, it's going to take some work, but I'll tell you, when people see me working hard and hustling to make this happen, um, they offered it. What can I do to help you? You know, people are not going to want to do your work for you, but if they see you working hard, they will pitch in to say, how can I help you? And um, that is my testament time and time again. The more I work, the more my friends, not even just people I know, but people who are just watching you, they will say, how can we help you? Exactly. Exactly. And it's a great thing that you actually, you know, you taking the time out to listen and you recognize the anointing and the calling because a lot of time people are kind of scared to change. And you'll see that, you know, as time goes on, people are very resistant to change, even though that they realize that change, change has to happen. But you're willing to sit there and open to those uh, different levels of change. Well, yeah. And change is scary. And, um, I'll tell you, it takes some faith because uh, the first project I, you know, it sat on my credit card for a few months until I could sell enough CDs to pay it off. And um, my prayer to God was, you know, blessing this project. And I said, God, can I just sell 250 CDs so that I can make money? <laughs> <laughs> and that was um, in 2012. And I, and I think God started laughing like you did and says, Dear, is that all you want? <laughs> I mean, you you know, like you know, ask me for what you want. If you want two fifty, hey, we'll give you two fifty. But you know, uh, if you want a million, ask for a million. You know, it's always I always say, you know, when you ask God for something, is it for uh, does He just give it to you, or it gives you the opportunity to grow and have it because it's already there. He just gotta, you just gotta allow the, His manifestations work for you. Yeah, and 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 the the key is that it's not all laid out, and it's scary, and um, you've got to take one step. It, you don't have to quit your day job to to do to follow your passion. You got to take one step, even if you make a plan and choose someone close to you who will hold you accountable to mm -hmm. get uh, steps moving forward. As I said, I asked for two hundred and fifty just so that I could get you know, the, um, uh, my credit card zeroed and, and, um, and I sold over a thousand. Yeah, there you go. One at a time and not even, not even just the sales. It was again, the testimonies of the people who were saying, I needed to hear your voice. I needed to hear that song. Um, at, at this point, every Sunday I've been invited to sing at a different church. There's, um, a Filipino church called Freedom Church in Virginia Beach. I've gone there um, several times over this year and they've invited me. They want to take me to the Philippines and to Ghana with them um, next year as they build churches. And again, Stephen, I asked for 250 CDs. <laughs> no idea. God done gave you way more than that. And then so. I had no idea that international concerts would be a part of it. As I said, you don't know the master plan. And, and I'm just not talking about me. Anyone who can hear my voice, God gave you a gift also. And he gave you a skill. And he wants you to use it um, to help your brothers and sisters. And he's going to bless you too when you use it. But you've got to take one foot and move it forward and start it. And you never know where you're going to end up. Amen. What what do you do to obviously um in these younger years that you're at? There's a lot sometimes a lot more worker uh more work that has to go into uh preparing your voice. You know, obviously there's exercise, there's training, there's right, all these different things. 
and the fact that you're singing every Sunday for the last 10 years or so and keep you going and you're traveling, that's a, uh, that's a toll. And even for those who are maybe out for years in their field, they may not be traveling that much as you are. What are you doing to maintain and exercise and keep those things going? Um, nothing really special. I just try to, you know, I go to a gym two or three times a week when I can fit it in it's, since I've moved. Um, and now I'm, you know, in different states every other week uh, between DC and Virginia. Um, I try to get exercise in, drink lots of water um, and just don't abuse my body really. I just uh, protect my temple and um, and the rest takes care of itself. Um, haven't had any voice training per se. Um, um the voice I, I always it's a gift god gave it to me and so that's why i try to use it to his glory you had that many family members that singing and playing the piano trust me there's voice training you just <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did what's your next goal well first off uh, you know let, let's talk about this beautiful cd i've listened to the first one and i enjoyed it so very much and it's a testament, you know, and what's going forward. And then now you have this wonderful CD that I got it, the, the Golden Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> Everything is, you know, um, and all your work is so much wonderful. Tell us about what made you decide to do a Christmas album. Obviously, you know, everybody tries to do a holiday album and things. But what's different with yours than is anybody else's? Um, I decided the holiday album because. Um, People who had purchased my first two gospel CDs have for the last four years been telling me, um, you need to do a holiday Christmas CD. And I thought, oh yeah, I know I get it. But again, you know, I'm financing everything. So you just can't hop up and do something. So I had to make sure everything was in a row so that again, when you um, put all those um, thousands of seeds of mustard seeds on your credit card that you um, put in the work that you know that you can um, sell the CDs to, you know, to at least break even. Um, so I knew I needed to do it. It was just a timing. And um, actually, I started working on this CD in March, April of this year. So it was, it was about an eight month project um, and just listening to Christmas songs and um, listening to the ones that I could really take a hold of and give my own um, rendition or flair. Um, all of them are the traditional songs, but um, I turned the traditional into a non-traditional by putting my own flair and my interpretation to the music. So I specifically chose 12 that I felt comfortable enough with and believed in enough that um, I could turn it into something that um, people have not heard on the radio already. You know, one of the things when listening to your albums, um, they have a very uh, operatic uh, feel to it, very wholesome, uh, very, uh, you know, and I don't want to speak uh, blasphemy uh, regarding it, but, uh, you know, Aretha Franklin. Um, mm. Wow. You know, <laughs> power, uh, you know, Ms. Coretta Johnson, those types of voices where it fulfills the room. Uh, no matter whether if I'm in a small room or in a big opera house or what have you, you just feel the emotion. Of the movie. You know, you're that woman that, you know, as a kid, you hear in the apartment next door singing every morning at 5 a.m. where they go. <laughs> uh, that, you know, you just got, you just can't help. Like, you know, you don't want to get out of bed. And it's like, you know, I got to get out of this bed. This woman's up here singing every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you have that level of energy and gift that uh, brings, um, such power uh, to your music. What well, you know? You. What kind of created that style? Because and, and that what built that style for you? Was it a specific artist that you were growing up that you admired, a family member that, that you know you have all these wonderful singers in your family? Was there someone in particular, or was it just something that just came naturally? Wow. Um, let's see. I'll start with the artist um, or the singer that really influenced me is Tremaine Hawkins. Um, from the Walter Hawkins and Love Alive um, album. That was my first introduction to gospel music. I think I was 11 years old. And Tremaine Hawkins' voice makes me stop the way you say. 
and um, you know, I always listen to her music. Um, and then I'll say um, a lot of it is on the job training, just singing um, for so long and growing in my singing. And I'll, I'll talk about, you know, uh, life, hard knocks and, um, you know, being in dysfunctional situations and um, overcoming them and being strong and surviving. Um, you know, a lot of people don't know your story. They don't know what you've been through. And I don't think it's for them necessarily to know. Um, you know, I don't put my business on Facebook. I put all the, I always tell people, no, I, I guarantee you, I only put the fun pictures and the fun stuff on Facebook. I'm not going to put the life's stresses and trials and drama on Facebook. I don't do that. But my friends and my God know um, the struggles and the situations in life that have tried to bring me down. But um, when God gives you a plan and you're faithful, no matter what people try to do to bring you down, um, you're going to get the victory. So when people hear me sing, they hear the victory. That's, I, I can't even describe. Um, some people have said, you know, when you hit notes, I, I don't even see them on musical scales. And I, I don't see them either. I'm just singing the victory. And if whatever comes out, um, that is uh, my testimony. You know, when you hear, you hear that victory and you keep going, and I've always said, uh, you know, when it's putting information out there, whether it's Facebook or any other platform, or even and just typing a letter, even if it's on something of personal nature, it's meant to inspire and to help somebody change, you know. So if there's always something that can help someone prevent from going down a certain path that um, you don't want them to have, uh, you know, go through, it's always powerful to be able to say, hey, uh, you know, this is the mistake I made. Because a lot of people sometimes will tell them something that we don't provide something back to them in terms of a story or something that's relatable. It's very hard for some people, young and old. Sure, understand. absolutely. Um, that's a powerful thing. Uh, what's your favorite song on this new Christmas album? You know, they're all my babies, right? But <laughs> I, had to, I had to try to nail you down somewhere. Um, I will. I will tell you the, the favorite. Um, they're all, but um, the one that really I play it over and over again is uh, Stevie Wonder sang it years ago, Someday at Christmas. Someday at Christmas, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of the John Lennon's Imagine. You know, someday at Christmas, there is not going to be hate, um, there is not going to be hunger, hunger. Um, people are going to love each other. There'll be no wars. Men won't, you know, use weapons as toys. Um, someday, um, mm -hmm. someday all our dreams will come to be. Someday in a world where men are free, maybe not in time for you and me, but someday at Christmas time. Mm, there you go. Very That's nice. the favorite. That's the favorite. Amen. And you got to sing later on today and also tomorrow and then the next day. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and through Christmas. There you go. What is Santa giving you this Christmas? Um, two healthy daughters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my daughters are 18 and um, 24 and um <laughs> them and glad to be their mom and if they're happy i'm happy in other words they run in this show <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> I, I just gave you the triple okay <laughs> <laughs> you got it they're in the tie they're in the tie water area still or they up here in northern virginia um yes they are um um they're in hampton roads uh Younger one is a freshman at North Carolina A and T. Um, on her master's degree, um, and both of them are 
pretty much uh, in the communications uh, feel like their mom. They won't admit that it's like their mom, but yeah, they are, have that are same they, kind of thought process. Are they eventually going to sing and tour with you as well, or how does that come along? <laughs> Well, Raina, the youngest, says that they think that they were adopted because they don't think they can sing. <laughs> they said, well, mom, um, we should be able to sing like you. So we think we're adopted because we can. Well, you know, Lord willing, it may come up later in life. And, uh, oh, absolutely. That, um, you know, probably, you know, Lord willing, if he sees fit children, grandchildren, things like that as well. So definitely. I agree. Uh, how can people find your CD and follow you and track you and all the other good stuff? Oh, good question. Um, I have a website at D-E-E-D-E-E-G-E-E.com. -E 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 okay. So we're going to have to say that again one more time. D-E-E-D-E-E-G-E-E.com. Okay, not a problem. Follow me on Facebook. It's uh, the letters D-D-G Media is my Facebook page and um, one click away to the music is uh, right on my Facebook page or two clicks away from ddg.com. Um, people can get the music and also they can um, Google on um, Spotify and iTunes. If they Google DDG, uh, Golden Christmas, they'll find me. Amen. Amen. Now I want to give you the magic wand for 2019 and I'm going to give you three wishes. What is something you need to bring for 2019? It could be for you, for anybody. What is 2019? Oh, 2019. Um, riding the ship in our government. <laughs> <laughs> riding that ship. Um, again, I'll go back to um, productive and prosperous and, and um, centered uh, daughters, my two daughters. And um, for me, um, I think my next project, I'm sure, is a YouTube channel, um, um, life coach type of um, channel where I can share some of my experiences and answer questions and, and share tips of um, how I got over. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. That's how it's supposed to be. Amen. Ms. D.D. Uh, G., I thank you so very much for your time, your candor, your honesty, and your patience. And God be the glory for your music, your family, your career, and everything else in between. Hopefully, we can get you traveling enough where you don't have to leave the nine to five and keep on going. We will all pray on that. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Stephen. Not a problem. You stay on with me. And everybody, thank you very much for joining us within Live and Global Media. We're here to tell the truth. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please always feel free to email us at enliven, L I V E N M, George Mary at gmail.com. That's enliven at gmail.com. You can also go to our Facebook page, our YouTube page, our Instagram page, or Twitter. We're all out there. And with hashtag Enliven and Global Media. You see my smiley face and all the wonderful people behind the scenes that have been in front and behind the camera that's helped us out so very much. I thank you so very kindly. Uh, thank you very much for crossing coming with the LLC and also the people that support, sponsor and support you. Thank you very much. May you have a blessed holiday season. Stay safe. Move to the left and be good to each other. Bye bye.